Welcome to the Vigorous q and I'm Coach Steve, here to answer all your bodybuilding-related questions. Today's question is from 5e Fast Fitness Facts. Hey Steve, first off, thanks for answering so many questions on your own time. You really are a godsend in the bodybuilding community, and I take your advice as gospel. Well, you shouldn't do that. You should also do a little bit of your own research, because I, I know a lot, but I certainly don't know everything. <laughs> so, please... When you hear something I say, it sounds good, please confirm that with a little bit of research. Yeah, it would uh, enhance your knowledge base as well. All right, back to the question. What would you say is the best way to optimize IGF-1 levels in the body without using growth hormone? Like with diet, training protocols, and peptides. Yeah, but it's the same, right? <laughs> no growth hormone but peptides. Or other supplements not including steroids. All right, so peptides aside... Um, IGF-1, a couple of ways. I mean, you can only produce so much IGF-1 by yourself, right? And it declines as you age. So when you look at the reference ranges for IGF-1, you see that every every five years, every two years, this gets less and less and less and less and less and less and less. To the point it's maybe 100 nanograms per deciliter. Um, but when you're younger, you can, you know, pump out a significant amount of IGF-1 by yourself. You don't need growth hormone or peptides or insulin or, or et cetera, et cetera for that. First thing you have to do is take away a couple things that reduce IGF-1, like metformin. Berberin could potentially lower IGF-1. Nolvidex could lower IGF-1. Yeah, metformin is probably the strongest, then Nolvidex, then berberin. So take those out. Yeah, stay away from those. Now, regarding diet, IGF-1 comes from the liver. So if you want your liver to produce the maximum amount of IGF-1, you need to make sure that liver glycogen stores are depleted when you go to bed, because again, growth hormone stimulates IGF-1 production, right? And your highest natural growth hormone pulses at night. So when you go to bed and your liver glycogen is depleted, growth hormone is released while you're sleeping, telling the liver like, hey, give me some of that sweet, sweet IGF-1. And then it's incentivized with low liver glycogen stores to pump out as much as it can. Yeah, so now you're basically allowing your body to produce the highest amount of IGF-1 by itself. You take away all the supplements that could potentially uh, reduce it, you take away the carbs that could potentially reduce it, and you sleep according to your circadian rhythm to make sure your natural GH pulse is able to uh, be as high as possible, pumping out the highest amount of IGF-1 at night because liver glycogen stores are depleted. Yeah? For that, you need to be in ketosis. And there's no easy way. Well, you can do fasting for a couple days, but that's only temporary, right? So get into ketosis first. It's one of the reasons why I always liked the ketogenic diet when I was drug-free, because you get the highest amount of IGF-1 production, because liver glycogen stores are always depleted. You know, except for maybe uh, Monday, because uh, Sunday is cheat day, and then uh, liver glycogen stores and muscle glycogen stores are pretty saturated um, with pizza or uh, donuts, or hot dogs, or hamburgers, or sushi, ice cream. Sorry, I am, it's Saturday, so I'm getting a little bit hungry. Um, so, that would be one way to do it. I mean, the diet is then going to be a ketogenic diet, or, or you know, a low-carb diet, because you want to deplete liver glycogen stores. And unfortunately, uh, since the liver can reglycogenate itself with food, and blood sugar and 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 uh, gluconeogenesis from protein or glycerol or you know store body fat it's the hardest part to deplete muscle glycogen stores you can deplete easily you just train for a week and the glycogen stores are gone poof diminished you're flat great you lost four kilos of water but the liver glycogen stores constantly gets replenished from food so you need to be in a ketogenic diet for maybe two or three weeks before that's optimally depleted yeah and then you're, you're still going to do some sort of refeed. So at the beginning of the week, you know, if you do your refeed in the weekend, at the beginning of the week, your liver glycogen stores are somewhat saturated. And then as the week progresses, those levels decline. Your, your muscular uh, glycogen stores are going to decline. You might get a little bit of gluconeogenesis from the glycerol because usually people do a ketogenic diet for fat loss. And then the growth hormone pulses at nice are going to be more and more and more and more effective for your IGF-1 production. So you'll see that IGF-1 production and levels should increase towards the end of the week, and then they'll slowly drop because insulin, glycogen stores, will kind of suppress everything. So 
let me see, peptides. I mean, if you use a screedagog like a GHRP6, MK677, Imer, Pirelli, and CJC, you know, there's a, there's a ton of them. Um, those could potentially increase growth hormone production, especially during the night, which could then increase IGF-1 production. Again, a segretagov will tell your pituitary to produce as much growth hormone as it can, naturally, which also declines with age. So if you're over 30, if you're over 40, 50, it might not even be beneficial anymore, and then that's where the real growth hormone comes in. Hopefully you're financially secure by that time to afford a little bit of growth hormone. But if that's not the case, if you're younger, you know, you're still going to school and, and you would like to optimize everything financially the best you way you see fit, GHRP6, uh, CJC together, that could give you a significant boost in uh, growth hormone production, which could then give you a significant boost in IGF-1 production. And then, you know, the rest of the time, you just ketogenic diet, you train your, you know, your, your, you train balls to the wall, yeah? high intensity, heavy weight. Ketogenic diet is usually a lower volume, uh, lower rep approach. So your working weights are going to be higher, you know, uh, instead of uh, 80 kilos in the 8 to 12 rep range, now you do 100, 110 kilos in the 4 to 6 rep range. Yeah. I think that pretty much covers it. And, and, you know, if you want more IGF-1 than your body could produce under those circumstances, that's where pharmaceutical or Chinese generic IGF-1 comes into play. And hopefully by the time that you require that much IGF-1, you're decently developed because, you know, a lot of people, they have access to it, you know, through the peptide websites. And just because you have access to it doesn't mean you actually need it or can utilize that much because, you know, when you're not sufficiently large you don't need all this extra recovery capability um, because your muscle can recover just fine from food and uh, and maybe a little bit of testosterone and gh so incorporate that when you really need to you can get as much results uh, or, or decent results with the advice i just gave you optimizing your ig form production naturally and I think the most important thing is just ketogenic diet and sleeping through your circadian rhythm because as soon as you start to get a bit later and later and later, the IGF-1 production or the growth hormone pulse at night is just going to be reduced. And, uh, you know, when you stay up late, and I'm start, starting to sound like an old man now. <laughs> when you stay up late, um, you know, you don't, you don't get that natural pulse because it's, you know, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning uh, if you go to bed at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Um, so... You know, if you're young and you want to go out uh, playing video games and partying, your IGF-1 might be a little bit lower, <laughs> you know? So you have to make a choice. What do you want? What do you want in life? Do you want high IGF-1 or do you want to have a good time into the early morning um, uh, and uh, get some uh, fun stories to share with your friends? All right. Hope that sums it up. Hope that answers your question. If anybody else has a question, you can ask me on the next vigorous Q&A or through the PPQ service or in the private Facebook group. Details down below in the description field of YouTube. Coaching and consultations is also available. All the new rates are down below in the description field. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.